What's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug. Welcome back to Wrestling Empire on the Nintendo Switch. And I have HBK, once again, who beat me one month ago. But first, we have an extra day here that is unscheduled. Let us head to the roster and once again try to challenge somebody for a title. I don't think that China will accept that, but we'll try it anyway. Because Becky Lynch is the new women's champion or something so that is happening but let's once again talk to china she's gonna say no even though she's in a few with, with macho man but all right sure whatever i want a match ninth wonder give me a match stop feuding with the macho man yeah this is not gonna work until somebody beats her then I can't challenge that somebody who beats her or she's just going to be the champ forever. Like, I'm not sure how this game works. So let's go fight HBK. Anyhow, I welcome you to a fine Thursday here on the program. Me and my good buddy HBK having a match one more time. Last time didn't go so well for me on this show, but you know, these things happen. Uh, some things to discuss here before I discuss AEW. Teddy Long with the kendo stick or the, I'm sorry, the bow staff. Teddy Long doing his TMNT cosplay. What? Okay. But, before I get into AEW from last night, we did have the NXT ratings from Tuesday down 8.4% to just under 700k, which is not a good look in the week to week to week to week. So, you have to wonder what it's going to mean for Dynamite from last night. I mean, obviously they, they did a million last week because they had blood and guts so this week did not have blood and guts and it was not a long build up so you have to wonder uh where will they be at when those ratings at some point today will they be number one in the night for the demo and everything else but we'll see we'll see now otherwise rumor saying that the return of the modern name maharaja uh to raw is to eventually feud with his ex 3MB bandmate, Drew McIntyre. So all that's missing there is uh, Heath Slater. He, he, Heath is on impact, so that's not gonna work there. But pop up, power bomb to HBK. I'm gonna win this time. Showstopper, I'm gonna win this time. I hope, we'll see. So, moving on to our AEW Dynamite broadcast from uh, last night, which was pretty good. Opened with Yuji Nagata, Blue Justice, going up against John Moxley, your current reigning, defending, etc., etc., for that belt. Big fight feel here. He had the big entrances, and for some reason, and I think I know why, but for some reason, they had John Moxley out there uh, in his entrance with Wild Thing. And I'm like, how much of a, oh my god, Ralph Zipper is here. How much of a Atsushi Onita mark is is John Moxley that he needed to have Wild Thing as his entrance theme. Like, come on, it's a bit much. And granted, Onita is pretty much re retired from in-ring, um, but he's definitely doing that FMWE thing. So, Canadian Destroyer from Ralph Zipper. Is that supposed to be Dolph Ziggler, who is an HBK knockoff to begin with? Like, what is the damage here? I don't know, but that was not great for me. But, as you might imagine, John Moxley defended and retained that U.S. title and is still the champion for who knows how long, but still the champion. But Nagata looking pretty good out there at 53. And also at ringside, Ren Narita. So that's pretty cool to see here on Dynamite on TNT. We had Ren Narita there. I'm wondering, where is Shooter? Anyhow, uh, the one thing on this show I did I did not really appreciate or enjoy or it was just not great was the Cody Rhodes promo. Number one, he told us that Double or Nothing will have a full attendance, like full capacity crowd there in the Daily's Place, happening on May the 30th, I believe. But also a long-winded Rah Rah America promo that was like straight out of 85 type, type stuff. Like it was definitely a bit tone deaf for the current state of the world and America and everything else, all things considered. Uh, so that was not great. And then that basically the entire promo led to the fact that he can now be called the American Dream 
at this one paper because a go go is from the UK and did the whole thing with Union Jack and everything else and whatever. But yeah, this it was a long and clunky promo that didn't really do much for me or anybody else in this current year of 2021. I'm just it just didn't really do it for what he's trying to do. It's not great. So he's had way better promos uh, in the past like year and a half than this was just not it. Not it. It was a long-winded way to say, hey, guess what? I'm going to be the American Dream for one night. Just one night. Yeah, all right, Cody. Sure, fine. But we get it. You look, you, you love America. That big, stupid tattoo on your neck. We get it. We understand. So, yes, that was that whole thing. Kind of the only real low point on this show, to be honest, was that promo. But, but, anyhow. Um, SCU fought the Bucks. Oh, I caught him in a pile drive. That was amazing. That was amazing. Rope break. I hate you. Attack slot gonna fly. Nope. HBK catches him. Hurricane from the half rope. Good God almighty. So SCU and the Bucks for those tag team titles. And if SCU could not win, they break up. They are done. Finito. Kaput. And unfortunately, SCU did not win that match. And, uh, Daniels got super bloody in that match. It was a little wild. A bit too much for me in a TV match. It was a little bit like, yeah, to tone it down there, Daniels. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a hard way thing or what, but he got ridiculously bloody in that matchup uh, with the Bucks. But they did the Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair, I'm sorry, I love you spot, which was, for heels, hilarious. Um, they did a kind of messed up finish where they use the cold spray for you know your injuries and whatnot like a ben gay type type thing um and they use that uh in the eyes of uh daniels there and that was it like the distraction and uh type of a finish and got the pinfall and kazarian could not make it to the ring in time to get that done so the only thing here i didn't like was that this is a big, like, defining moment for the end of SCU. And they immediately cut to uh, Mox and Eddie Kingston in the Elite's locker room, trashing it because of what they just did. And I'm like, wait, you don't have the moment with Kazarian and, uh, you know, like, in the ring with Kaz and Daniels? Like, that's not in the ring happening. You go, you go to Eddie and Mox and you go to commercial. And yeah, they came back and had the hug and everything else, but like to cut away right away just seemed like a little tone deaf there. But no, you had to have Mox and Eddie trashing the locker room. Like, did you really though? And I understand why, because later on they announced they're gonna be having a match at for those tag belts at Double or Nothing, so that, that had to get set up somehow, but it didn't need to be right after when you could have had that moment with SCU in the ring. S.A. Rios, released by Super Lucha Libre. Michael Cole's agility is down after I beat him up a couple matches there. Attack Slug and Paul Bearer are going to do it one more time. One more match. And I got nothing on the schedule. I wish I could challenge whoever your mid-card champion is. Oh, wait. Ralph Zipper is a champion. Let's go challenge Ralph Zipper. You're free. You just interfered in my match. Like, then give me a shot at your title. Whichever belt that happens to be. Dolph. Like, what are you doing here, man? Challenging you. On my day off. Nope, you aren't tough enough. Find someone who's at your level. Well, that's interesting. What stat there is too low in terms of my, my stats? Uh, strength, skill, agility. I guess strength. So we can do some training here. Um, I forget how to do that, but we can do some training here. I go to gimmick, and I say I want to train my strength. There we go. Alright. Anyhow, and then we have a day off to rest up our health back to where it was. Shane Asterix's skills have improved. Wide Tided Earthquake is having an effect on his agility. Buddy Brew going to Weekend Warriors. Sam Mower, Rikishi, going to Re Wrestling Revolution. And an online poll has Rex, the toughest wrestler in Wrestling Ref. And we have The Godfather on TV, but let's challenge on pay-per-view Dolph Ziggler. We raised our toughness by one point, so will Dolph give me 
that match. Hmm? Give me that match. Give me what I want. What do you got? Hmm? What do you say? Nope. Not talented enough. So, first it was not powerful enough or not strong enough. Now I'm not talented enough. And what stat is that? Uh, because I've got, like, everything else over 70. So, I don't know. I don't know. But let's get on the ho train here on the show today with the Godfather. So, elsewhere, and speaking of Double or Nothing, Christian announced he'll be in that Casino Battle Royale, as will Matt, Matt Seidel, and they fight next week. Uh, Orange Cassidy fought Pac. This match was supposed to go to a time limit draw, but Orange Cassidy kind of got messed up, a bit loopy there, possible c concussion, I don't know what. Um, and they kind of panicked and brought out Don Callis, Kenny Omega, and it ended up being a 10 count for both guys, just on the mat. And the match for pay-per-view is going to be a triple threat match between Omega, Cassidy, and Pac. So they got to the same result, but they had to kind of call an audible there on that to make it happen, which is, yeah, that's a little rough there. I'm not sure what move, if it, if it was the kick or if it was the... Liger Bomb that knocked him loopy, but he was definitely out for that whole break on commercial. Um, you know, it was not a good look. But thankfully, uh, they've gotten better at that kind of injury protocol after that whole Matt Hardy thing and all of that business. So they've gotten better at their injury stuff, which is good. Which is good. But uh, we also had, uh, yeah, they, they announced the Bucks and Mox and Eddie for those tag belts at... D-O-N, and also they announced Page versus Cage for Double or Nothing. So, you know, that's going to happen there. Uh, the Pinnacle was out there for their coronation, and that coronation uh, ended up being a retread of the Attitude Era because they had the whole Austin beer bath thing, but with the bubbly in the truck instead. And that went on to announce Stadium Stampede 2. And I'm like, wait, number one, you said that that show... Uh, is going to have a full-capacity crowd in Daly's place. Stadium Stampede was a cinematic match because it was a pandemic, you didn't have any fans in the crowd, so you could do all these crazy filmed things that you filmed like the day before for that show. It was not live. You couldn't do it live with all those Matt Hardy shenanigans, right? So how are you going to have that as a Stadium Stampede 2, but you're going to have it live? That seems... Misinformed, but hey, perhaps they can do it well. I don't know. Now, then it was the hey, uh, before our main event, this show does have this this show does have ladies on it. So you had a Britt Baker promo, you had a Thunder Rosa squash match, and you had a Jade Cargill promo back to back to back. They're like, hey, we have girls, we have girls. So that was a little weird. Like they weren't, you know, more sp spread out on that show. But whatever, it was what it was. Godfather one, two. Three. Not a three. Okay, sure. Fine. And the main event was indeed Miro versus Darby for that TNT championship. And a, a, a very elongated uh, beatdown of Darby before the match started. Now, was that because they had to kill time? Because it was supposed to be a longer match for Orange Cassidy and Pac? I would say probably. And so that, that kind of went on for a bit. Uh, and I'm also wondering if the Pinnacle thing went on for longer than it was supposed to because they had built time there on their two-hour broadcast. But um, we have a new TNT champion. So Darby, uh, not sure if he's legitimately hurt from that stairs thing last week or not, but Darby lost that belt after nine defenses successfully. So congrats to Miro, your new TNT a champion. And afterwards, out comes Lance Archer. So I guess that's his first challenger there. It's going to be Archer there. And sure. All right. Cool. Cool. So yeah, overall, a pretty good show. Uh, outside of that Cody Rhodes promo and the fact that they were like, oh, right, we have girls. That was a little, like, bruh. Bruh. A little odd. A little off. But was what it was. Is what it is. Pop up. Power bomb. Attack slug. Gonna fly from the top. On to the Godfather. Can he put him away? Full goodsies on that gut wrench. Jack Swagger style. And a three. No, not a three. Not a three. The shock and the awe. Pop up, powerbomb, holding it. Two, three. 
There it is. Attack Slug. Victorious once again, but dizzy, and he raises my hand out of respect. Thank you, Godfather. Thank you. Y'all both raised my hand. A hard-fought victory, nonetheless. Stephanie McMahon wants me to be a ref in one of tonight's matches. I do not have time today. I have to go film Pixels, like, right now. So I'm done for the night. I gotta edit this video and then go, go film Pixels for tomorrow. So, yeah. It's a little rough. A little rough. Monica Marquez heading to Federation Online. Cliffhanger and a Rocky of Hollywood. Our friends. Luke Harper heading to Weekend Warriors. Bray Wyatt has said that he left. Christopher Daniels is disappointed that Luke Harper joined Weekend Warriors. Alexa Bliss is in poor health this week. Little Miss Bliss. Kamakani's profile has dropped as being criticized by the press. Jim Ross's attitude is up. Boomer Sooner. The Mountie heading to Weekend Warriors. And Berlaine going to Wrestling Revolution. Strong Style has sunk below Wrestling Rev, so... Alright, Steph, look, I'm... I'm trying to finish this video, Steph. I have to go film a thing with Grim. Like, what the hell? Come on now. They want more technical wrestling. Are you gonna fire me? Okay. Skill up to 76% or I'm gonna get fired. A thing to keep in mind for next week. So, I need my skill at 76. I have, like, one, two, three, four weeks to do it. And I'm currently at uh, 73. That's not a problem. Anyhow, I'm a tax slug. Thanks for watching. More videos right here. See you next time. And I'm out.